the Dreaming City has been in its recursive loop for three years now. Each week would see the surrounding area progressively become more taken. Blights popping up around the Awoken City, Taken Forces surge, and minions of the evil Hive Gods make themselves known. With the cause of the Endless Night defeated, today we're going to recap how the curse started and what it may mean for future content. So let's first recap some info on the Dreaming City's curse. Some of you may know most of this, but there are some lines thrown in here that I'm sure some of you forgot, so let's get right into it. So how did the curse start in the first place? We could not do it alone, so I turned to the Guardians. Six brave heroes came to destroy my people's greatest secret. Riven, the last known Ahamkara, a creature of immense power and cunning. The Guardians killed Riven and ripped out her heart. But Ahamkara transcend death. They can transform desire into reality, even when they are nothing but bone and dust. I should have known that Riven would grant one last wish, one last curse. Now the Dreaming City has been taken. I opened the gates. I ordered the attack. I should have known. So Petra tells us that with Riven's death, a wish was made to start this curse. And in case you didn't know, Ahamkara are wish dragons that can grant their own wishes. Sometimes those come true, sometimes they are like a genie and bend your wish to a different outcome. In this case though, Riven did grant the wish, but she wasn't the one who made it. In the last wish raid, this line can be heard. You and I are not done. We're inseparable now. Through your actions, we forge an age-old bond between my kind and yours. One wish granted deserves another. And I cannot wait to show you what she asked for. Oh, murderer mine. So the Siren of Riven says, I cannot wait to show you what she asked for, meaning someone else besides Riven made the wish because Riven is speaking here. In another lore card, Riven says this as well. She knows that though I am taken, I am beholden to no one. So I ask her if she wishes to take up those strings. She does, and I take a new shape. My cage loses its purpose. I can tell this is not part of her grand design. This is an introduction. She is at play. Through our new bond, I glimpse her intention, and I hope she remains at play. Most of those who bargain with me do not win. She releases vibrant, unrestrained bursts of air from her face. I do not. So the only logical guess as to who Riven is speaking to could be Quoria, or more likely Savathun of course, given that this character or person released bursts of air from their face, so possibly Savathun breathing or talking making that wish. Another line from Forsaken said, Oryx took the Ahamkara Riven, who then fell into Savathun's claws. The curse puts the city on a three-week cycle. Each week, things will get more taken until we have enough power to charge the blind well, take out Dol and Karu, and complete that cycle over again. Now, the key here to making this all happen is the Vex mind causing this. Now, we've speculated that it could be Quoria for a long time, but one of the Tekian Sadia actually says, I have a reason to suspect a Vex mind may have helped create this curse. Now this completely makes sense, because in the Books of Sorrow from the Taken King, Oryx partially took a Hydra mind called Quoria Blade Transform and gifted it to his sister Savathun. Now it's important to note that the curse was started by Savathun, but Quoria is responsible for the loop each week, so when Dolan Karu is killed, it resets and Quoria keeps this loop going. Now there are a couple of possibilities when it comes to Savathun's motives for the Dreaming City curse. 
The main thought or idea is that she wants to make herself more powerful, of course, find an easier way to feed her worm. After each loop, we kill Dolan Karu, who happens to be Savathun's daughter. She was essentially placed here in the Dreaming City to continue this loop. Now, one belief is that she was either searching for the Awoken pocket dimension called the Distributary to mess with time and make herself super strong. This one seems the most believable as some other entries also hint towards it, but it also could relate to Imbaru, or using all of this trickery to make the Guardians make her enemies speculate about her, fueling her power even more. I mean, hey, maybe she's using both or something we completely don't know about. So if we have all of this right, how do we end the curse? Has Sabathun acquired what she was looking for? Did she find a way into the Awoken Distributary and which queen will possibly take us there? Or must we race to the finish to ensure that something like this doesn't happen? A couple of weeks ago, Osiris said something weird. Horia serves the Witch Queen Sabathun. It is she who is responsible for the Endless Night. Are you certain of your data? After all, Sabathun is known for her deceptions. Osiris, I did not know you had access to this channel. I wish to confer with you and the Guardian privately. Hmm. If my experience and wisdom can aid you in Quoria's capture, you may have it. Capture? Quoria is discordant and must be exercised if the great machine sky is to shine again. So Osiris is being a little sus in that clip. He wanted us to capture it instead of killing it. So that's kind of weird. Keep that in mind for future stuff releasing. Now, the main storyline for the season of the Splicer has concluded. There may still be some secrets and stuff involving Lakshmi and all of that, but Mithrax and Ikora tell us that the Endless Night is slowly lifting and by the end of the season it'll probably be gone. In that final mission though, we would enter the Vex Domain to take out the source of the Endless Night itself, Quoria, the Dreaming Mind, the same one responsible for the curse in the Dreaming City. So does this mean that the curse will end because Quoria is now dead? If you head to the Dreaming City right now, it doesn't really look like it. This first week that this Quoria mission is available happens to be the most cursed week in the Dreaming City. Now it would have been kinda cool if there was a little teaser thrown in there or some type of secret that you can find in the city itself, but currently we have nothing. If this is where next season is going though, it makes me wonder. I feel like Mara would need us to stop something in the Dreaming City to end the curse once and for all, right? Some type of threat. I feel like we wouldn't just walk in and things would be perfectly fine with the curse. Perhaps Sabathun's wish will cause a backup measure or some type of side effect because of Quoria's death? I guess we'll have to wait and see. There's also the theory that Quoria didn't die. Now I made a video on this already, you can check it out on the channel. But there is some evidence, a weird death animation, the chests are controlled by Savathun, so perhaps the loop still persists because the Dreaming Mind never died. In Truth to Power, Savathun told us that if we reach 999 power that the curse in the Dreaming City would end, and we know this didn't happen. So is Savathun using those tricks of Imbaru to try to make herself more powerful by tricking and deceiving us? It seems likely at this point. Anyway, Guardians, let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. With Quoria dead, will this have some type of effect on the curse in the Dreaming City, and where will we go from here? If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.